Is it taking too long for Fiberfest to appear? Do you yearn for the soft woof but settle for unrequired angst? Well, do I have the event for you? The Canadian Pet Expo. There's floofs, there's snoots, and did I mention color? I found out that there's a pet expo coming up, and like any animal focused person, I decided to convince my family to wake up at 4 a.m. and take a drive. It was pretty easy. I told them about a reptile section, small animal, and fluffy booths. It was pretty easy to bribe them. Passports in hand and armed with an alarming amount of sugar with coffee. And we're off. You may be wondering, why would a shepherd want to go to a pet expo in the first place? Well, even though sheep and goats are pretty easy keepers, fresh air, nice mixed pasture, clean water, and they're pretty set. But what if you want to glam up your sheep? I hear you saying, what about tractor supplier the feed store? Can you get stuff there? All valid questions. But I'm looking for some cute costumes, some bows, maybe some scissors, accessories, collars with some pop color and pizzazz. Just something a little bit different that I can't find at my local feed store. There is supposed to be something for everyone there, so let's find out together. One, two, skip a few, and we're there. Parking was a breeze, but watch your step, something fell as a foot. Walking in the door, there weren't any maps or event announcements or any timeline. They did pass out coupons, so no biggie. There were so many dogs. Dogs and all animals were welcome, as long as they're on a leash or an appropriate carrier. For people bringing their dogs, poop bags were provided and several hardworking janitors were there to mop up any disasters. And there was quite a few. There was supposed to be an ongoing cat show and a load of activities, as well as a fashion show and an artistic grooming demonstration. I was pretty stoked. The building was pretty loud, the construction certainly didn't help with that. Time to explore. Off to a quiet area of the building, there is a large room with a banner overhead. And it seemed like mostly people were there hanging out and chilling and watching B-roll on the big screen. Behold, a colorful graveyard. We'll come back to that one later. Maybe something will happen. I continued on walking around trying to figure out where there were some events going on or if there were some kind of banners next to where the events were supposed to take place. I did notice this crowd over here coming around and trying to see what the commotion was about. There was a man running around chasing after his dog, and, and it turned out that the dog was just chasing after a flu. And it was a photo op. Continue on trying to figure out where some more events are. The smell really hits you sometimes. Watch out. Most of the people were pretty good about picking up their poops, but those trash cans really have that smell. I'm glad you guys can't smell it. Moving on, it's pretty eclectic. It's mainly dog focused, and by dog focused, I mean dog owner with the dog accompanying them focused. There was a lot of opportunities and photo ops for people who brought their pets with them, but that was an additional fee involved with that. So it was a bit more pay to play for a lot of the activities there. Shop wise, there were sticker stations, Pokemon and pop vinyl figurines, socks galore with every species you can think of. And after a certain point, I couldn't figure out if something was for dogs or for people. I saw some snacks that looked delicious, but it was really hard to tell in the snack area what was for dogs and what was for people. And then I saw some, I saw some pet owners grab some jerky from a bag and then bite into it and give it to their animal. And then they proceeded to eat it. So I think this is a little bit out of my realm. The reptile part of the expo was super cool. There were a lot of isopods, arachnids, lizards, and other small reptiles. I haven't seen any fiber artists utilize reptile byproducts for their art, but I have seen artists use spider silk in part of their weaving and painting. It's pretty interesting parts. Moving on, we bump into the bird expo. There were a lot of toys and treats, sticks, and, and even birds for sale there. It was pretty colorful and pretty much a one-stop shop for anything for any bird owner. Now the small animal section was where it was really at. The guinea pig booth and bunny booth were super cute. The guinea pig booth was pretty cute with some homemade houses. There was a hamster and hedgehog section that had some really aspiring huts that were so colorful. The bunny booth was where it was at though. They had a lot of hay trees as well as snacks that were perfect for smaller ruminant mouths. It was so cute seeing all the different ways they've mixed up their hay to make them more palatable to 
towards these bunnies, which I could think would work really well with sheep too and making treats for them. I ended up picking up a couple snacks that looked really fun and they were well priced. Next up, we ended up heading over to the cat section. It was a lot quieter there, which was pretty refreshing. There was an educational speaker highlighting breed standards about red flags and other awesome tips on health and what to look out for in a breeder. It was really nice. The only unfortunate part is I kept on missing all of the events. I was really stoked to see a fashion show or the grooming demonstration. Overall, it had a seen to be seen vibe. It was really cute seeing people walk up with similar breeds, stop and talk breeder. The vendors were really friendly and there was a lot of petting booths and areas where the vendors and breeders, you could just go ahead and pick their brain and get some hands-on experience interacting with these animals and gain some information. There was a lot of fundraisers, rescues, trainers. One thing I didn't see were any fiber artists that worked with Shangora. That would have been interesting to talk to someone who did that. They're not very common, but they're out there. On the way out, I did manage to catch one event. I'm pretty vertically challenged, so it has some drawbacks, but I managed to squeeze in and catch some dogs diving into the water. Pretty cute. I found some really wonderful combs and scissors, but prices were a little bit outside my range. The combs I have aren't designer, but they work just as well. There were some cute bandanas, but not the hair accessories I was looking for. And a lot of the grooming supplies I was able to find cheaper at Tractor Supply and the feed store. Oh look, a human prison. They do have everything. I really hope you enjoyed watching this and maybe next year I'll see you there. Don't forget, I appreciate you and the grass is always greener in your neighbor's garden.